Hi, I'm Chef Nicholas Lodge and welcome to this video where I'll be showing you how to use a continuation of my Flower Pro Blossoms mold. Now this is the third video in the uh, obviously filmed videos that uh, use the blossom mold. So if you haven't watched video number one, that's very important to watch that first. That shows how to make the stamens, how to make the flowers, the blossoms, how to make the calyx, how to make the leaves. And uh, that's important because in this video, I'm going to cross-reference obviously things I've already shown in the first video. And then the remember the second video shows a continuation of the cherry blossom, uh, both the single and double, how to color them and then how to arrange them into natural sprays. And also on the beautiful cake behind me, uh, how to do a long spray of cherry to go on a wedding cake. So let's get started. So in the first video, I introduce you to my Flower Pro Blossoms mold. And we use this Blossoms mold to create both single and double flowering cherry. And uh, for the single and double flowering cherry, I used actually the cavity here that has um, the heart shape. So this is the one I use for both the single and double flowering cherry. And then we use the three buds here to make the buds of the cherry the two calyxes, large and small, for the buds and for the flowers. And then we use the serrated edge leaf, which is here and here. In this video, I'm going to show you how to use the other parts of this mold, which is going to be this one here, which is more like a traditional blossom shape. We're going to use that for the apple blossom I will start off with. And then we're going to move on to peach and plum. I'll be using this for the plum blossoms, and then this slightly elongated one for the peach blossoms. And for the peach, I will also be using the smaller leaves, which are, have a little serration on the edge, but not as serrated as the big leaves. And also for these three uh, blossom variations I'm going to show you, we'll be using these three buds here, which are the, and they will give you a more elongated bud. And then in video two, I showed how to do the coloring on the single and double cherry and the leaves, and of course, how to wire the cherry into beautiful natural branches, plus also how to make a long branch to sit on the wedding cake that I started the introduction with. Um, so when we are making the, uh, the flowers I'm going to show you, we're going to start off with the apple blossom. And uh, so the apple blossom, so these are all made in a very similar way, but just the techniques of each vary a little bit. So for the stamens, so remember you need to make sure you've watched video number one because I'm repeating a lot of the same techniques I did on the first video. So we repeat the stamens as for the cherry blossom with white or ivory because these are going to be dusted a green color. I would recommend if you're using the stamen method, use white or ivory. Yellow would work, but as I said, it's best to start off with a white or an ivory color. So exactly the same technique, one eighth of a bunch of stamens. The only difference here, we're going to then use half width green tape. So when I did the single and double flowering cherry, I take down here with twig or brown tape. Here I'm using, as I said, light green half width tape. Then once we've done that, we're going to dust the stem and thread lime green. So I'm going to use lime green color dust. All right, so this is a sort of a limey green. And I'm going to dust the stamens. And when you dust the stamens, you can either dust it in a little bunch like this, or you can actually uh, open it up, whichever you find easiest. But a lot of times when I'm dusting the stamens thread, I would just almost use like a sort of pouncing technique here like that. And you can actually then just dust the stamens this uh, all over green, see? But as I said, you can also open it up. So then you open it up, or as I said, you open it up and then you will then dust them. So here we're gonna take the stamens, and now I'm just gonna just open that up and so you're going to get these limey green stamens. Okay, so just like the cherry, so the cherry, remember we did the cherry with yellow and then the double flowering cherry. But so you can also do it like this, so whichever you prefer to do. Okay, maybe so we have the stamen part is going to be um, a lime green. Now, once we've done that lime green, and of course, if you're making several of these, you would just make as many of those as you need. We're then going to take some confectioner's glaze. So we're going to use the confectioner's glaze here. And then we're going to then uh, on the stamen tips and dip into yellow pollen. So we're going to use yellow pollen, which I discussed in the first uh, video. This is semolina and uh, semolina and a um, like Harrison's yellow, which is a golden yellow. But as I explained, well, there's many companies, including my own, that sell this pre-colored, all right? But as I said, you can... Uh... So here, we're actually going to put um, some confectioner's glaze onto the tips, and then I'm going to then dip that into some um, pollen. 
Now, apple blossom, like all of the blossoms, all right, so cherry, apple, plum, peach, they vary, you know, from white, all different shades of pink. Um, and also apple blossoms sometimes have yellow stamens and uh, sometimes they have green. Um, I'm showing you here the green one. So we're gonna then just put a little bit of the glaze just onto the tips of the stamens. So I'm just using a small brush here. And then I'm just gonna just dip that into the pollen. So you see how you're gonna get this nice fuzzy um, technique on the stamens. So you'll have the, the nice stamens. And of course, if you were making say five cherry blossoms, uh, you would prepare all five of those. Now, if you're going to use the thread technique, which uh, on, for example, the prunus on the double flowering cherry, I showed making the thread version where I used um, pale green thread. Okay, so you can watch that on the first video. And um, then I used confectioner's glaze on the tips of this and I put pink pollen on for the double flowering cherry. But what you can do is if you're using thread, I would suggest using either white or a pale limey green. This is really a little bit mint green color. But um, as I said, if you have a white sewing thread or say a pale limey green color, just make your thread. And then again, you put the glaze on here and you dip it into the, uh, into the pollen. Um, so you can make these with thread or with obviously uh, with stamens. And, uh, and then of course, if you're using white thread, you would dust it green. And of course, if you're using green, you just have to put the yellow on the tips. So that is the first step of uh, making the stamens. So now we've going to make, we've got the stamens. We're going to move on to the next part, which is going to be to make the actual uh, flower. Now we're going to follow, as I said, exactly the same technique as we did for the uh, cherry blossom. The difference is here, we're going to be using uh, this cavity here. All right, so this is the one looks almost like a Stephanotis color, cutter shape or Stephanotis shape. Um, and as I explained in the first video, the introduction to the mold, this mold can be used for many, many different um, flowers, you know, so there's lots of different flowers, not just cherry blossoms or spring blossoms. Um, so think of this as a mold you could use for many different types of flowers. And for example, this you could use for geraniums in the summertime. We can use this for citrus blossoms or stephanardis. This could be used for primroses and primulas. So as I said, there's lots and lots of things you can do. And then the leaves on here, these can be used for other things like this could be used for wisteria or jasmine leaves. And the buds also are very versatile. And of course, you could totally go towards a more of a fantasy flower. Just do like a little fantasy blossom to, for example, go with roses. Now we're going to... Um, the slight difference here when we made the cherry blossom, as you can see the cavity here, cherry blossom cavity is just a little bit larger and a little bit wider. So we used a seven small here. Uh, here we're actually gonna use a six large. So we're gonna use a number six large. So that's one quarter below and three quarters above. So when you measure on your size guide, you can see it's about a quarter of the pace below and about three quarters above. But if you think of the cherry, we made seven small. You can see that's a really uh, you know, goes through really easily. Whereas a seven small would generally just go through. So this is smaller than we use for the cherry. So you'd measure however many of those you need. We're gonna take your brush, gonna put just a little bit with a brush, tiny, tiny amount of vegetable shortening fat into there, some white fat, some vegetable shortening. Just a very, very small amount, okay? And then we're gonna take your paste, we're gonna condition it. Now I'm continuing using the sugar in paste. This is, as I said, a starch-based paste, so it stays more flexible. You can get it really, really nice and thin and it doesn't dry as brittle. And on the first uh, video, I showed how if you find it's a little tight, the paste, you can just dip it in water and add a little bit of water to it or touch your finger with a little bit of water. Um, and then you, of course, condition this with just a little tiny bit of vegetable fat, vegetable shortening. And of course, on my different Flower Pro videos, I've used quite a lot of different types of paste. You know, I use a lot of the Renjul paste. But as I said, the sugar in works well for flowers like blossoms, daisies, gerber daisies, because as I said, they're easy to make, but they're easy to break because of their sort of petals just stick straight out. Now, we're gonna use the same technique as we use for the cherry. That is, we're gonna use the smallest cavity, which is actually, this is the smallest cherry blossom bud. I'm just gonna place that on the top, and then you're going to come in for a uh, press on the top here, okay? Just gonna press on the top like this. So once you pressed on the top, you're gonna get your little, uh, what we call a little Mexican hat, which looks like a little sombrero. And you're just gonna make the back of that tapered, all right? So you get like this witch's hat. And then what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna place this into the mold. I'm just gonna push this in with my finger initially. So just to establish that in the middle of the mold like this. And then just like I showed on the cherry, we're gonna take the back vein of the smooth part of this, 
just going to put this over the top okay and then I'm going to take a cosmetic sponge so this is a cosmetic sponge which has got like a cross cut in it I'm going to put this over the top I'm just going to press this in with my cosmetic sponge so what that does it helps to establish it into the mold we're then going to take our uh, Dresden tool now you're going to just sort of push the paste in so where the you see where the indentations are here just make sure the paste isn't over there I'm just going to start to work that down towards the petals and you almost pull in the paste from the from that little hat part you see so you actually pull in your paste you need from the hat part but so this needs to be quite thin this paste all right and as I tell my students in my Flower Pro Ultimate Members Club, you know, if you find that you're, for example, struggling a little bit with the thickness of the paste, if it's a little too thin for you, then just go ahead and use a number seven small. Okay, and in the case of the cherry, you could use a number seven regular size. Especially, you know, when you first start, you, the important thing is to learn the technique, all right? So once you get to that, that point there, you see, then we're going to just finish that off. So now we're going to take our cosmetic sponge, so this is our cosmetic sponge. Um, as I explained in the first video, this just um, makes it a little bit easier. It's also quite thin here because the petal's quite thin. We're just really pushing that towards the edge of the, of the mold here, like so. This is the last one. So just make sure, as I said, you stay within the perimeter of your, of your mold, okay? Like that, okay? Now we're gonna take the back veiner we're going to place the back vein on the top there. Remember, you want the little hat at the top, and you're just going to press around the perimeter. Okay, you don't want to press around where the ring is there because you'll get like a sort of it almost could cut through because, as I said, you just want to press around the outside so you can get your fine vein in. I'm going to remove that from the mold. So you see your petals are nice and thin. And then we're going to take, just like we did on the cherry, we're going to take our little uh, scissors here. These are our spring action scissors. And I'm just going to remove just like a little tiny slice. So literally, as I said, it's a little tiny, tiny piece. So you, you basically cut to where the um, cut in as far as the hat is. So what that's going to do is just going to extend the petals here. Because like on the cherry, I did this the same. And when actually I uh, show you the peach and the plum, I don't do that. All right, because they're slightly different shape uh, flower. But when you have cherry and you have apple blossoms, but you actually literally, rather than just making a single cut, you're making a, a physical slice there. It's the last one here. We're gonna make just a little cut, another little cut. So you just literally removing just like a little slice of uh, cake or pie, okay? Then we're gonna put it onto the mini pad here. Now remember, if you're reading, just keep your pad paste covered. Um, we're gonna soften all around the petals on the hat side, on the black side of the pad, using a small ball tool or the companion tool. Now, so where we did the cherry, we only softened the top half of this. Here we're going to use, so you can either use, this is for example, like a FMM one, but like a PME and several companies have, or you can use the companion tool. And you see the companion tool is very comparable uh, size, okay? And um, so you're just gonna go, go around the edge of your petals here with your companion tool. Just going to work around your edge. As I said, just gonna just gonna come around your edge here like that to soften it. Or as I said, you know, sometimes you might find it easier to use something that's a little bit longer here. But it's gonna just soften around your edge. So it's gonna get this little soft frilliness, slight frilliness on your petals here. This is done on the hat side, okay? Now this technique could also be used for blackberry flowers as well. Um, in my um, Flower Pro Book One, when obviously I showed the, um, I showed the, the how to do sort of like obviously a lot of the basic flowers and I used cherry blossoms in book one, they were made with the um, small, the little small blossom mold in the uh, Flower Pro mold. But you can also use um, this technique for, for uh, blackberry flowers as well. Sorry, so then once you've done that, you're going to then, um, then you're gonna use medium ball tool row from the outside to inside on cosmetic sponge. So then on a plain cosmetic sponge, what we're gonna do here using a medium ball tool. So in like, for example, the FMM, I call this the small ball tool. This is the medium, this is the large, okay? So I'm using a medium size ball in tool. And what I'm gonna do here is I'm just gonna just stroke and I'm actually letting my ball tool roll. So I'm just gonna let my 
So what I'm actually doing here is I'm just gently cupping these petals here and we do this on a cosmetic sponge or a soft sponge because if you did it on the pad you would actually it's a little bit firm and plus you'd also take away to raise the nice vein in. And then just like um, we did on the cherry, okay, next thing we're going to do is going to take your uh, ball tool, end of your companion tool, is going to make a little hollow into the middle and then using my, on my finger, I'm going to then just press down the base of each of the five parts of the petal. So you're going to get this almost like a little five point star in there. And then we make a hole down through the middle like this for the wire. Just remember, you know, the, um, the sugar in paste doesn't dry as quickly as, for example, some of the homemade paste or the rental paste. So just keep that as they're covered. We're going to take um, a little bit of egg white. So we're going to just take a little bit of egg white here. I'm just going to use my egg white just brushed on the very top of the green floral tape. Keep that in a wet washcloth or flannel. And you're going to just thread that down through the middle of the flower until that just disappears into the flower like that. If you find like one of the petal, that one was a little bit frilly, you can just almost just thin it out with your fingers. But you'll see how you're going to get this nice shape of your apple. And then we're going to work the back of the petal. So you're just going to just stretch that down. All right, so you want to just stretch it back down, just like you did on the cherry and things. And then using a pair of scissors, we're just going to just remove that. This wants to be about, you know, 10 to 13 millimeters, a little bit less than half an inch, just like on the cherry. Let's mold that down like so, okay? And then you're just going to just hang that upside down, okay? So just hang that upside down and uh, for it to dry. So that is how we make the, uh, the cherry flowers. And you can see here, um, these are two I've got already colored, and this is one ready for uh, coloring a little later. Um, so of course you'd make as many cherry as you think you need for your spray, but as you can see, this looks like also a blackberry uh, flower as well. So for other fruits, summer fruits, strawberry flowers, blackberry flowers, raspberries, and things like that, you could use this same concept. Just the coloring often is gonna vary a little bit. And some blackberries are white blossoms and some are pink. So next I'm going to show you how we make the buds. Now for the buds, um, we're going to use this part of the bud mold. So this part of the bud mold is uh, so the opposite to when we did the cherry blossoms. You can see the mold here. These are much more round in shape, all right? Uh, these are going to be more elongated. So you can actually see the mold is a little deeper. It's got to step up and uh, it's going to be, as I said, a little bit more pointed. So these are the mold, the bud molds we're going to use for all three blossoms, for the apple, for the uh, plum, and for the peach. Okay, now also some cherries have this shape bud. So this mold is really multifunctional in that you can mix and match and do different. So even if you were doing two different varieties of cherry on a cake, some cherry blossoms can be this shape more and some will be this shape. This is like the Yoshino cherry, which is Japanese traditional cherry. But as I said, some flowering cherry is more of the shape of the apple blossom. Now we're going to start off for the buds. We're using 28 gauge wire. This is third length wire. This can be white or green. We're using quarter width green floral tape. Okay, and we're going to just take the floral tape and we're going to wrap around the end three times. So one, two, three. Okay, we're going to make a little hook. So you're just hooking over the end of the wire and then three times one, two, three, and then continue down the wire. And this is the same way that I did the medium and the large and extra large cherry blossoms, okay? Because the mold sizes are a little tiny bit different. So anyway, so you're going to do three times, hook times three, come at least halfway down the wire. And you'd make many of those as you want to make small buds. In the spray I'm making, I'm using two small buds, two medium, two large, and two extra large. Now we're going to measure off your paste. And so we're going to measure off your paste here. So this is going to be a number five size ball of paste. So I've already pre-measured my paste here. I'm just going to put my little balls of paste under my pot here. But of course, like if you were making, say, three of these, you would measure off three number fives, and then you can put the rest under your little pot. So this will be number five, regular size. All right, so a third below, two thirds above. Okay, so this is just like a normal size. When we did the um, previous part where I showed you the apple blossom flower, as I said, when we ever talk about a large, it means one quarter below three quarters. But mostly we use regular size, which is one third below two thirds above, or a small size where it goes through the hole. 
Now, what we're gonna do here, we're gonna just roll this into a little sausage. You don't have to measure this like on the cherry, just make it into a little sausage. Now, because this is a more open bud, unless your paste is sticky, you won't have to use any vegetable shortening or fat in here. Um, on the other pieces there, I've used a little vegetable shortening or fat, but I said if it doesn't come out, then use a little bit of fat, but I say usually this one is a pretty okay. So that's gonna be pushed into the mold, and that is going to be filled level. And if you've got a little bit of excess paste on there, you can take that off with your little flexi scraper. You can just, but that really, you're just filling the mold up level. So usually a number five, you have a little tiny bit of excess. So you see how that's gonna go into there. And then taking your companion tool. So now with my companion tool, I'm gonna to push that into the middle and I'm going in about halfway in. And you'll sort of, sort of have an idea. So you're just gonna go in. So I wanna push in a little further than I did on the cherry, okay? And then we take a little bit of egg white. So we're gonna brush just a little bit of egg white all over that floral tape bud. And remember, as I showed on the cherry, the wire here is quite thin, all right, 28 gauge. So you wanna hold quite close down to the bottom. And what you're gonna do here, you're gonna push that in so that the, the actual floral tape bud will sort of like disappear. You see, it's like a level with the top of the mold. Now we're gonna flex this around, all right, meaning just gonna mold this around. And for this particular one, because it's a little bit smaller, you can actually use your Dresden tool if you find that easier, just to sort of push the paste up. But you're just gonna almost just mold that around the, the wire there like so. So you see how the floral tape bud will just be in the middle of the bud like that. So now of course it's elevated a little bit. And you're just gonna open up the mold and just remove the little tiny bud. And you see how what you're gonna do there is you're gonna have a little five section bud. You're just gonna just gently mold that around the bottom. And then with your companion tool, we're just going to continue where the lines, the five lines come down. You're just gonna continue those three, four, five. So you're just continuing the lines down here like so, and that would make your little bud. But this could be used for many, many different types of flowers, not just cherry, okay? So that is your smallest bud. Now the Next, the medium, the large, and the extra large, you're gonna do exactly the same, but these floral tape buds are just a little bit bigger, okay? So what I did there is I used quarter width tape, I went five times, I hook, I went five times, and I've come down the wire. So it's only the small one, you do the three times hook times three. Now, next one we're gonna do is going to be the, um, as I said, the medium size one. So repeat using five times hook times five, we're gonna use a number six small, all right? So this is gonna be a number six small, so that means a number six that just goes through the number six hole. Again, we're just gonna condition your paste. But I said, if your paste feels a little sticky, all right, because you know some of the commercial paste on the market is a little bit more sticky, you can also just put a little touch of, um, as I said, corn flour, corn starch on there as well. But as I said, just roll that into a sausage. Now, the medium size one, this is the small one, the medium size is to the opposite side. You'll see the size of the hole. Um, so this is the medium size one. So that's gonna go in and that will actually completely fill the mold level, all right? So you see that that's gonna fill the mold level. And then we're going to put the, to go in with your companion tool about halfway in. We're gonna take some egg white, put a little bit of egg white onto this. Again, we're gonna take the floral tape bud, gonna push that in until it disappears and just gonna mold that around the base, all right? So this is very much like, you know, a lot of the like flower pro blossoms and things like that. So you see how you've actually created that slight rounded part there, just flex your mold, and this comes out of the mold. Again, just mold that around, and then it's gonna just take your companion tool and where the five lines are there, the three. This is also has a little texture on there as well. All right, so it's gonna be your medium size bud, and, um, that would be a medium bud. And then when we do the large and extra large, we're using the central cavity. So we're gonna use um, here, just a regular number six size for the large bud. All right, so that's just gonna be a normal uh, one third below, two thirds above. So how we would normally measure a number six. So again, we're just gonna just, but this is a little bit easier to get these out because the shape of the, the round buds has a little bit more of a, because it's rounded in shape, a little bit more of undercut, all right? But just remember if you sort of open the mold out, that will help to release as well, okay? We're just gonna take, this is a six regular size. So this is gonna go into the large cavity there. 
And as I said, that will that will fill the fill the mold up so you can you've got a little bit over it. It's fine. Okay. And then you can take your so all of those first three, you're just sort of like filling the mold up basically level. Okay, and then you're going to then make the hollow with your companion tool. So it's going to go into the middle here. There you go, and then going to push that in. And then you're going to again just going to flex the paste, to just mold around the back there. I take that out of the mold. And this is going to give you a large bud. And you're going to then just going to take that and just smooth that with your finger. And then you're just going to just going to come down here. And you see how the bud, if you look at this bud, you can see how it's got like three segments on it. So what this is looking is like in like a more mature bud. So you see how you've actually got like three outer petals and then two. So you just follow the line of the, of the petals like that. All right. So you're just going to do each of those is going to come down to give you a vein in. But see, that makes a perfect geranium bud, for example. So if you did these in the summertime and you used a red paste or pink paste, you can make, um, as I said, geraniums. And then for the large size one, for the, um, as I said, the um, slightly over bud, you're going to use a six large, all right? So this is going to now be uh, six large. So it's going to be one quarter below, three quarters above. All right, so it's going to be a six large size. And then what you're going to do here, you're going to make that into a sausage, okay? You're going to put that into the mold and it's going to sort of like overfill the mold. You see how you're going to get this little, and don't trim that off because you want this to look more like a cupcake on the top, you see? All right, and uh, so then what you do is you take your, again, your companion tool, going to hollow that out, and then you're going to put some egg white onto there. But with all of the Flower Pro, there are some Flower Pros I'd always recommend putting veg, you know, things that are flat like this because they're quite shallow. The little bit of vegetable fat or shortening in here, what it does, it holds the paste into place. All right, so here, on this one, you're gonna have more of a, as you can see, more of a sort of a cupcake on the top of it, but you wanna stay within the perimeter of the, of the mold like this, you see? All right, it's gonna take this out. Again, you can see you're gonna have just a little, it's really the same as the other one. But it's gonna smooth that around, so you can just use your fingers and just gently roll that around. And then what I'm gonna do here is I'm just gonna continue those lines down to the bottom. There we go. All right. So you have these like three sections. So what you do here, so these are going to be like your three raised outside petals. So we're going to take a, take a pair of scissors. I'm going to use my scissors on the side. All right. You can sort of see the petal there. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to about cut in about a third of the total length of the petal. You see, so if you think of the, the petal there, so I'm going to cut in about a third, but you're using the scissors on this side. And you're going to come around and then you've got two side by side going to cut into there, you're going to cut into there as well. So if you actually, if we look at this like a figure, what we have is we've cut into the head and the two legs and we've left the two arms, which are the inside petals, obviously intact. Okay. Now we're going to use the back of the vena. So we're actually going to use the back of the vena and we're going to use our Dresden tool. Now the reason for this, if we did this on a pad, all right, so we use the soft or the, and we stretch this pedal, you're going to lose that vein in that this has got on it. So I've come up with a way of uh, use, keeping the vein in. So what you do there is you place this onto the vena, so the inside is towards you, and using your Dresden tool there, what you're actually going to do there is you're going to just stretch the pedal and flatten it at the same time, you see? So what you're doing is you're creating this pedal and you see how then you're still going to have the veining on the back of it. So then we're going to do the second one and just position this wherever it's comfortable, but you want to make sure you see it's like almost a fan shape. You're just thinning out that these three pedals. But what this does, it emulates the look of a bud that's starting to open about to pop into a flower. Okay. So you see how you're actually going to get the veining onto there. And then you take your um, egg white. So then with your egg white there, so with your egg white there, you're just going to put a little bit of egg white just down the inside of those petals. And then what we're going to do is we're going to just squash this back into position like this. And you see how it's going to look like a bud that's starting to open. See? And this, this as I said, works. We did, uh, you can do 
this technique for, as I said, any of these buds, but this is the, the largest of the four, okay? So if we put them, if we take these four buds, you can see that's your, like, your extra large, that's your large, that's your medium, and that's your small, okay? So that shows you the four stages of the bud. So usually just the largest one, I would do the snipping. But if you wanted to, you could also do that on the large as well, okay? So those are your buds, and then you just put those to one side to dry. And um, so that is how we use the bud mold. So coming up next, I'm going to show you how we uh, move on to the, uh, some of the other techniques and talk about the leaves and the calyx. So the calyx is exactly the same as the cherry. Um, on the, if you watch my first video, I show how to make the, um, obviously, little calyxes. And so for the apple and the plum and the peach, you would do exactly the same calyx. This is the pale green referenced in the first video. And uh, once you get the paste in, you pull in with your companion tool. So you're almost making a little bit like when we cut with the scissors. Um, and so when we put the calyx onto the flower, what it means is you've separated the pieces. So when you put it, because on the flowers, the flowers are quite long on the back, you see? And so the thing is, is that the, uh, it means the calyx will almost like slightly overlap each other because it's a more of a skinny shape. And then when I did the cherry, I used exactly the same technique on the small buds where I used also the, um, the companion tool to cut in between. But on these three uh, blossoms for the apple, uh, for the uh, plum and the peach, because the bud is a more rounded shape at the base, there's no need to make the cut with your companion tool in between the petals. So literally you just do the calyx, but you don't have to do that last little step. And you just would attach that in the same way as I show on the cherry, okay? Um, so that is our, um, obviously our calyx. And then um, your leaves of your, the leaves of your, um, um, apple blossom are done in exactly the same way as the cherry. So those are done the two sizes, same as the cherry, where I've got the small size and, and then the ones, the other ones, same as the cherry with the serrated edge, all right? So this will be number five size, this is gonna be number six size, all right? So just follow the cherry blossom leaves. Coloring is a little bit different, some of the colors I'm using, but as I said, the, the color in there is the uh, same for um, that. So next I'm gonna show you how we uh, color the um, apple blossom and then talk about the leaves, and then we're gonna go on to assemble this. For the dusting of the apple blossom, we're gonna dust Cosmos around the petal edges front and back. Now, this is the same color I used on the cherry blossom, but of course that started off pink, so it's gonna look quite different. But um, apple blossom, when it has pink, is just a really, really soft color. So just a little bit of pink, and you're just gonna just very gently just brush that around your edge of your petals, both front and back. Now, you don't need to put as I said, uh, too much, don't lose too, too much color onto your brush. And of course, these uh, flowers I'm showing you the color in on have dried. So you, of course, you could just hang these in your food dehydrator or just let these dry for two or three hours uh, ready for the next step. I'm gonna put the pink around the edge. We're also gonna do the same. Now, sometimes when we do the coloring on the edge, we use a flat brush when we want a sort of stronger, but when we use a round brush, you're just gonna get just a very subtle coloring just right on that very edge, you see? Okay, you're also gonna take the pink and we're gonna dust that about two thirds of the way down the buds. Okay, so you're just gonna brush the pink about two thirds of the way down. And that will really bring out the detail in the mold. You'll see the, like all the lines on there and the texture on the bud. And then this is your, again, it's gonna come down here. Just brush in on the edge and come down about two thirds of the way down. on your bud here, like so. You're gonna get the pink. Now then we're gonna take, next we're gonna take some green here. This is a light um, apple green, okay? So this is a light apple green here. And uh, what we're gonna do is light apple green at the base of the petals and the base one third of the flowers and buds. So what we're gonna do here is gonna take the apple green. I've got a small round brush and I'm just gonna come in. So just gonna brush where the little light lines are in the middle. So you're just gonna put just a little bit of green. It means to be a very small brush. You're gonna get a little bit of green just in the center part there, okay? And then you're also going to put this around the, the base of the, the flower. So just where you have the, the flower itself, you're just gonna almost just wiggle this around. So it's gonna give you this nice subtle green at the base. And then when we do this on the buds, you're gonna brush that so almost this is brushed on the bottom one third. So you're gonna put your green, will come up the bottom one third. 
So that's the inside of the calyx. That's going to be the, the flower or the bud side of the calyx. So this gives a very nice sort of subtle graduation. So it's going to be the light apple green. And then we're going to use some lime green. So this is some lime green here. I'm going to put a little bit of lime green and I'm just going to sort of brush that just around the top part of the calyx. So just going to just rub your brush around. So on the, on the flower, because on the flower, it's the calyx is going to be sort of uh, cupped. And then here on the bud, you're going to just actually just gently brush that on the top of the calyx. Just him just going in and then just a little bit around the, the tip of the calyx. So you're brushing the calyx both sides with the green. So just gonna come in here with your lime green. So on the cherry, I used an apple, um, an apple green. So the lime is just slightly brighter. And remember, you know, your brand of colors, this is my sort of Nicholas Lodge brands of colors, but you know, you can find you know, comparable colors. I mean, it's just really also remember you might want to make it really, really pale pink for like say a baby shower christening cake, or you might go a little bit stronger with, um, you know, some like on a wedding cake. And of course, the color of the sugar paste or rolled fond that you put this on is also going to vary to make the flowers. Obviously, they might look very washed out, so you might go a little bit stronger. Okay, so that's going to be the, um, that will be the flowers. And then um, as you do them, you're going to put them into like put them into a styrofoam little block or little cake dummy. And of course you can. Now there's two ways to do this. You can either steam it, you can either steam it as um, now, okay? Or what a lot of times when I'm doing small components like this, like hydrangeas and flowers like that, often I would just assemble it and then I would just steam the whole branch afterwards, all right? Because sometimes that's quicker rather than say picking up 35 hydrangeas and steaming them individually, put the hydrangeas together and then just steam the whole thing. So I'm going to put that together and then steam it. And then the leaves I have here, these are the leaves and uh, those are done exactly the same way as the cherry. Uh, when I did the cherry, I used the moss, the apple green here, which is just a little bit darker. So you can see the difference between the, the um, apple green and the lime green. And um, so what I did there is I've used lime green and then you use a little accent, which in this case was the cosmos, just like I used on the other. So this, these leaves will just be a little bit more like limey green rather than quite as so much of a mossy green, okay, or apple -y green. So those are your components. So when I come back, I'm going to show you how we put these together and how we would arrange these. So I'm going to make a branch very similar to the cherry. So what I've done is I've divided my components up. So I have two of each size bud, all right? So, and so I've got a total of eight buds, so two small, two medium, two large, two extra large. I have um, three flowers. So I've got one grouping with one flower, one with two. And then I have three small leaves, four large leaves, all right? So you can mix and match your combinations. And this will give you like almost like three little clusters. Now, um, in my uh, second video, I showed how to make a more realistic looking uh, branch, all right? So how to actually sort of like uh, create the effect of looking like it's a cut piece of wood off a cherry blossom branch. Um, in this video, I'm just gonna show putting these together in a similar but more basic way, and I'm just gonna leave an extended wire, meaning more that you would put this into an arrangement maybe with other flowers. But if you just follow the direction shown in video two, uh, two um, that is uh, if you wanted to make it more like a, just a branch of cherry, of um, apple blossoms to go on a cake. So what I'm gonna do here now, I'm gonna change out to brown floral tape. Now there are often times where we use a combination of green and brown. So what I'm doing here is I'm just also, as I do this, I'm going to open up the components so they don't sort of like whack into each other. So you see how I'm just gonna make this little group in here. So just sort of naturally where they meet, you're going to just take them together. So I'm gonna use, as I said, a, and then I'm going to put in the leaves here so I'm going to just take my pair of tweezers, I'm going to put the leaf in here as well. But as I said, you can have any combination. So really there's no set rules here as far as, but usually in um, main flowers, what we call focal flower, a focal flower is your sort of like a focal point of a room. So in this spray, the flower is the focal point and you always work in odd numbers, all right? So like in the cherry, I have five flowers in here in the apple blossom, the plum and the 
peach I'm going to show you next. I have uh, three flowers, all right? So you always want that gives a good balance. But you see how here I'm just going to then use my floral tape there. Now in the cherry, then I made this look more realistic like bark where I went then up and then down and textured with my scissors, which you could totally do. I'm just showing you really more of a sort of simplistic approach if you were going to use this, let's say with roses, maybe with white roses or things like that. So then we're going to do the third grouping. So here, and I have these flowers pretty much um, all about the same opening. On the cherry, uh, in my cherry blossom spray, um, I had obviously two, uh, three full flowers and then I had two uh, sort of semi-open ones here. So you see, so you can just sort of put these however you want them to go, but you're just going to have your little grouping of your apple. And once we get this finished, we'll actually dust some chocolate brown. So rather than have that severe line where the green meets the brown, you'll get this sort of more, um, as I said, where the, it would just sort of uh, dissipate into the, into the green. There's like a lot of, uh, some of the, um, you know, some cherry is like that as well. The stems are green and then you have the brown, the main part is brown. I'm just gonna put in my leaves here. I'm gonna pop these in. As I said, this is so we used um, half width green to tape and then we use quarter width for the, um, then you can put three. I'm gonna show you four leaves onto here, so just get a little bit more foliage. And as I discussed on my, um, when I talked about my cherry, um, you know, a lot of times, because the blossoms come first, you know, the tree when it starts in the springtime, the blossoms are the first to appear. And then when the uh, flowers start to die off, then usually that's when the leaves come in, all right? So you really, whether you have it with flowers or without flowers, is totally, uh, without leaves is totally up to you. Um, when I'm doing just like a spray on a cake and I don't have any other flowers to mix with it, I prefer to have the leaves because I think it just looks more balanced. Uh, when I um, show you the peach, the peach I'm going to use some small leaves, the plum I'm not. I'm going to do more of like a branch, um, a little, almost like early spring. And then I'm just taking a 22 gauge wire here. All right, so it's going to use a 22 gauge wire. This is um, about two thirds of the length of the wire, but of course you can make this full length or shorter. Um, and uh, like on the, um, on the cherry, I used the wire was 18 centimeters, seven inches long. So I'm just gonna start off here with my brown floral tape. I'm just gonna then just tape this to the top here. And I'm just gonna go down um, once on this, just to sort of show you. So, but again, remember when we make the, the cherry branch, you can see here, you see you're gonna make it like you're gonna come down and up and down, so you get this thickness. Um, so if you wanna make it more of a, like a specimen, um, like a piece of cherry blossom branch, just follow the directions for the, um, for the cherry. And if you were just putting this into a spray with say roses or things, you can do that. But of course you can go up, you can go up as well. So see, so you could just go one, two, three, like on this, this would just give a little bit of natural thickness to it. All right, and then at this point here, I'm going to just put in my so I'm just gonna just bend my first cherry, uh, my first apple blossom branch in here. Just gonna just take my apple blossom. And then you can add your extra two wires. So I'll have a total of three wires um, on, the, on the apple blossom. But as I said, this thickening technique doesn't take long to do. It just sort of helps to make it look more natural. And remember on the cherry, I show how to make like moss on the branches and you know, sort of lots of just really more natural effects. So you're just gonna just sort of open that up like so. And then I'm just gonna come down here. I'm gonna put in my last grouping of leaves here to make my apple blossom. And then let's say you're gonna use this in a spray where you might have say roses here for like a say a wedding cake or other spring flowers, you just really decide on how much of the stem is gonna be visible. So I'm just gonna come uh, three times. So if let's say that you're gonna have like another flower here, you don't have to thicken it all the way down. And then I'm just going to just gonna come all the way down to the bottom here, just with a single thickness of floral tape. Remember I have three, three wires total. I started with a single wire and then I'm going to add two extra wires to this. Just gonna cut that. And then you can do the sort of texturing, like on the cherry I use, because it's thicker, I used uh, wire cutters, which you can totally use here, but you can also just use 
but that one you can use just like regular. These are just like school um, scissors. So you're just gonna just texture to create that effect here like so. Then you're just gonna open these out. So just gonna just take your leaves here. All right, and you can just of course just create the nice natural um, branch you want to create. And then what I would do here is I would take my um, napkin. I'm gonna take a little bit of chocolate brown. So this is some brown dust here. And then what I would do there is I'm just going to just where the stem, so you see like where the stem is visible here, where the stem meets the that. Then also just at like the where the green um, green meets the here, the brown, a little bit of brown there, a little bit of brown here as well. Okay, and then you're going to just simply steam this now. So we're going to then gonna take this and steam it. And the steaming is going to, and it doesn't, it doesn't interfere with the leaves at all. Now, the leaves are obviously glazed with a spray lacquer or a brush on glaze. So, but you're going to just uh, steam the whole thing. And um, then of course, this could be used in on a cake, you know, as I said, with, um, but as I said, if you want a more realistic uh, branch there, you can use your, um, use your uh, technique I showed you for the cherry. And, uh, but just giving you as a different options. This is really a more of a simple arrangement. We see really, really beautiful. And of course the apple blossom is white. But remember the varieties, some varieties of apple blossom don't have any pink on them whatsoever. Some of them just have a little bit of blush on the back of them. But, uh, and you see how your buds, now your buds will always look a little stronger in color because when the bud opens, it becomes like lighter because then it becomes like the edge of the petals, okay? And uh, so just wait for the steamer to go. And as I said, this is a little small closed steamer, but you can also use, uh, for example, like a tea kettle, but just hold it further away. Um, this is more of a gentle steam. And we're just gonna just gently steam the buds here, like so. I'm gonna just hold those in the steam just for a few seconds. And that's going to really enhance the flower and give you a nice natural look uh, for the flower. And uh, so, so here we have our, um, as I said, our apple blossom, our beautiful apple blossom spray. Um, so again, you know, like obviously you can see here, just a little bit different shape than the cherry. All right. And, uh, you know, as I said, so you've got lots of options there. But remember, this could be used totally for cherry as well. But because these are all on the mold, I'm showing you different options for the different cavities. So next I'm going to show you how we do the plum and the peach. So now we're going to start on the uh, plum and the peach. Now the plum and peach have identical stamens. The middle is different, but the actual stamen length and how they're colored and finished off are identical. And uh, plum is obviously uh, the one of the early flowering um, blossoms. So in Japan and China and Asia, uh, plum blossoms are winter flowering flowers. So it's really the first touch of color in the winter time. April is usually cherry blossom season. Um, and uh, of course we have a lot of plum, but also we have a lot of peach uh, because Georgia is known as the peach state. So we have obviously a lot of peaches are produced or grown here in Georgia. But um, so I'm going to show you these and it says there's a lot of similarities between the buds and the sort of coloring is a little bit different. And the, um, as I said, stamen inside is a little different, but both very similar. But of course you also have almond blossoms, which are very similar. Um, you have pear blossoms. So there are many, many other fun uh, spring flowers that you can make. Now we're gonna start off with the stamens. So the stamens are going to be made um, in the same way as the cherry. So I'm gonna talk about the, the thread method and then the stamen method. So exactly the same as the way we make the cherry. The only difference is we use want to use the white or ivory because we're gonna be dusting these pink. And then the other difference is we're gonna make these a little bit longer. So they're going to be made to about 15 millimeters long, which is about five eighths of an inch. Whereas the cherry, we made the cherry 13 or half an inch. It's just a little bit longer, the stamens than the cherry or the, um, as I said, the apple blossom. So then we're gonna take some brown floral tape. So this is all done in brown, half with tape. So then we're gonna go around a couple of times, gonna come down about halfway down. And then here, what we wanna do is rather than just fluffing the stamens, we want to curl them. So what I'm actually gonna do here is see, I'm going to hold, that's why you wanna make sure you get around with your tape. But you're gonna just see what I'm actually doing here is I'm taking the stamens in groups. You see how I'm actually using the tweezers. A bit like how sometimes you curl ribbon with the pair of scissors. So what you do there is you're gonna just sort of curl those like that. So they sort of, they will incurve around. So you see how they're actually gonna sort of like incurve like this, all right? Whereas the apple and the cherry, we just fluff them, okay? So they pretty much stay straight. 
Now, once we get to that point, we're going to take a, um, a napkin, all right? And I'm gonna use some American Beauty. So this is American Beauty dust, okay? So we're gonna use the American Beauty dust is going to be dusted over there. And then we're gonna be glazing the tips a little bit like I showed on the apple, but I'm using here the curve. And then you can just go over the surface of this. And you can do this on a, um, like on a napkin like this, or you can just brush up and down to get this sort of pink color onto the stamens, all right? But you see how your stamens will in curve there like so. So you have this pink, all right? So you're gonna have this sort of soft pinky color onto the stamens. Then we're going to take um, the confectioner's glaze just work on a little piece of uh, wax paper. This is like a waxed, uh, waxed uh, paper for painting. And what we're gonna do here, we're gonna use a combination of yellow and brown, all right? So this is commercial, but you could also use a little bit of, for example, like this and this, all right? So you could just take a little bit of like an egg yellow colored dust, a little bit of brown dust, color that in your semolina. So what you'll actually do is you're gonna get like a chestnut color, okay? So uh, you get this almost like chestnutty brown color. And that's the color I'm going to use. Now, when we do the, the when we do the um, stamens, we're gonna do them the same as we did the, uh, the apple blossom there. So we're gonna just take your glaze here. And here, when you're using stamens, you can just brush that onto the tips of the, of here. And then you're just gonna then put the pollen on there like so, you see? And you're gonna get this sort of pollen uh, onto the little tips. And if you have any, sometimes you'll have like a little odd one that you just need to put a little bit more glaze on. But you only need a little tiny bit of this because this would literally do hundreds and hundreds of, uh, of blossoms, but that's gonna give you the stamens, all right? So they're gonna curl like that. And um, now, so that's, that's how you do that with, um, with the stamens. And then an alternative is to use pink thread uh, pollen as the stamen version. So again, on my first video, I show using um, using the pink thread like this, all right? And um, then, now, if you're gonna do plum, you don't want to put the wire, the tape on this, all right? And I'll explain that in a moment in the next step. But so if you're gonna do peach blossoms, you just would pull the wire down, tape it with half width brown tape. But uh, we're going to take the, um, Take the pollen. Now, you, the, when you do this, you're just gonna sort of open this out a little bit like a bird's nest. All right, you can't really sort of curl this per se, but it's just an alternative to using the stamen thread. All right, so this will work well. And then you're gonna put the, so remember when we do the, when we do this technique, what you want to do, this is like I showed on the prunus, on the double flowering cherry. Just gonna put some confectioner's glaze onto a piece of parchment paper, wax paper, just sort of something that uh, can be disposable. And then what you do here is you're just gonna dip the little stamens in you can't use the brush method and you don't want to sort of saturate these. You just put in like the here on the ends and then you're gonna dip that into the pollen here like so. So you'll have that, just a little tiny bit more there. And that's gonna give you a stamens. And then what I'm gonna show you do is in this for the, pe for the plum. But if you're gonna do the peach, just do this and then just tape it prior to using the glaze. And other than some yellow dust in the middle that it's finished, all right? Um, so those are your uh, stamen options. So then once we've got the, the stamen made, um, next thing we're gonna use is we're going to create some pink paste. Now, um, when I did the cherry, I used the sugar in white and sugar in pink. Um, and I used a uh, you know, number 12 and then a number three, number 12 small of white, number three small of pink. Here I'm gonna be using, so we're going to use a number 12 white and a number six fuchsia pink. So I'm just using a regular number 12 and a regular number pink uh, pink one, all right? So what we're gonna do here, just mixing these two together, this is just gonna make a stronger, stronger pink because we're gonna use a slightly stronger pink for the um, plum and for the, for the uh, peach. So you see, I'm just gonna, and remember you can also just take some white paste and just add some pink color to it. But I discussed that in the first episode about what brands I would recommend because some pink on the market is not light stable, but plus also some pinks on the market are um, a little bit garish, a little bit bright, all right? This gives this nice sort of like, almost like a dark baby pink color, okay? So we're gonna take, it's gonna take that. Now, if you're using, if you're going to do here, if we're going to be doing the, so you mix this together, all right? And then just gonna pop that in your bag. 
And then when I come back, I'm going to show you how to finish off the dusting and uh, the stamen centers, and then we're going to move on to the flower. Okay, so we're going to move on now to, I'm going to show you first of all the center of the plum. Now in the plum blossoms, we're going to have this little, almost like a little bagel shape. It's going to be like a little, think of like a bagel or a ring donut with little serrations on the side and hollow in the center, okay? So we're going to put that onto the the stamens first. I'm going to show you in this one here. All right. So what we do there is you're going to take a number two small ball of pink paste, brush a little egg white in the center of the stamens, and then lift this up with a uh, your companion tool and put that into the middle. So we're just going to measure off a number two small size. Okay. So it's tiny. So it wants to go through the, just through the number two hole. Okay, so it wants to be small enough so it's going to go through the, through just through the number two hole. Okay, it's going to make another one of those. I'm going to show you two different options you have here for making this based on whether you do a uh, the, uh, stamens or whether you do the uh, thread stamens. Okay, so what we're going to do here, we're going to just, um, as I said, just open up that center part. So using your tweezers here. So just with my tweezers. So this is my center part here. So just sort of open that out, you know, once you get your pollen on there, so you have this part here. Okay, and then I'm gonna take my, um, gonna take my egg white, I'm gonna push my egg white into the middle of the stamens. And I'm going to lift up my little ball of paste with the companion tool. I'm gonna position it into the middle of the stamens. And then with my, ball to end of the companion tool. I'm just going to press that down. You see, so what it's going to do is going to give you this like ring. All right, you can move your stamens around just a little bit. There we go. All right, just make sure that, as I said, because once this sets, it's going to sort of hold the stamens in place. Now then I'm going to use the needle to end. I'm just going to make a hole in the middle of this. And then you're going to come from the side of this. So you're just going to come from behind where the stamens are. You're just going to make like little tiny ridges just like little tiny ridges here. So you're almost making like little scallops here. So you see how you're just gonna create with the needle to end of your, there's no set number, but you're gonna get this just like little, almost like little fluted, like a bagel shape in the middle, okay? And then that would be for the, that's gonna be for the plum blossom, okay? And then when we do the, now if you're gonna use thread for that, all right, so if you're gonna use the thread technique, um, because the thread is soft, you, the little round ball of paste won't sit in there, okay? These are actually just a little bit long, so I'm just going to pull these down just a little bit. There we go. So remember, these want to be about 15 millimeters long. So what you do there, if you're doing a thread one, what you do is you take a, so just sort of open that up just a little bit. You're going to take a 30 gauge wire, you're going to make just a little tiny hook on the end of it. It's a very, very tiny hook. And you're going to take your number two small size ball of paste. You're going to put a little bit of glue on that little hook. You're going to insert that into the little ball of paste like that. You're going to hold this around. You're going to flatten it out. And then what you do is you're going to create exactly the same as we did in the center of the flower on the end of the wire. So you're going to use your companion tool. You're going to make a little hollow here, you can make a little hollow, you're going to use the needle tool and make a little hole in the middle, and then you're just going to go around this side of this, making these little tiny scallops. This is quite tiny, but it needs to be. All right, you're going to make this little tiny scalloped, like a little bagel shape. All right, then what you do is you let that dry, okay? So this is one, and of course you can just pop this in your food dehydrator. This is one that I made already dry. And then what we do here, so this is very similar to the way I make poppies, all right? So if you've watched my poppy videos, when we make the poppy, the center of the poppy is uh, made, dried, and then you thread it through, like think of it like a nest. So you see what you then do is you're gonna thread the wire through the middle of the stamens. So it actually will come through the middle part here of the stamens there. You're gonna pull the wire through the wires just come in through there. There we go. 
Okay, and then we're just going to pull. So you see what we're going to do is we're going to pull this wire through, and then the wire comes through here. There we go. And this wire is going to come through, and it's going to sit in the middle of the stamens. Okay, so we're going to sit in the middle of the stamens here, and then you're just going to just mold this around, mold, wrap the, take the stamens, and put those around the outside of it. And then what you would do is on the plum, then you would then take your brown floral tape and then with your brown floral tape. So of course it's easier if you have stamens, but I'm just wanting to show you the, the two different uh, options because you can't, as I said, the thread is really just too soft to be able to just put that little piece on the top because there's almost no substance there to hold it. And if you needed to, you could go back and put some more and then you can obviously just bring those up. All right, a little bit like that. And that will give so that will give you the alternative center. Okay, so you can either use your can either use your um, as I said your thread or you can use your stamens for that. So that's the the center part, and then um, the rest of the coloring goes on that a little later on. All right, so you're going to um, then let dry, and then um, if you're when you do the uh, peach, all right, on the peach we're going to use a little bit of yellow on that. So we're just going to just open this up. A little bit. This is a thread one, just to show you. All right, so this is just the same. But see, if you if you make the center like this and you put your tape on, you've got no way of getting that wire in the middle there. So here we're just going to take a little bit of yellow. So I'm just going to use a little bit of daffodil yellow, and just going to brush that onto the the middle here. So you're just going to have that yellow uh, in the center of your peach blossoms. All right. So those are your two slight variations on the stam uh, stam uh, stamen. So the um, just a quick recap on that. So you're both the same, all right, but your peach is going to have the yellow in the middle of it, all right, and then your plum is going to have the little ball of paste in the middle of that, but the same exact stamens. So whether you use, um, whether you use the um, fine stamens or you use the thread, both of those are possible to do. And you can see here the two, these are the two unfinished flowers, but you see how, so obviously the stamens in the plum are more separated because of the ball in the middle, whereas obviously in the peach, they're going to be more like a cherry or blossom, but a little bit more uh, angled. So next I'm going to show you how we make the flowers, all right, and there's a little bit, a little bit of difference because of the we're using two different cavities. So for the um, plum blossom, we're going to use a number six larger. This is very much like how we made the apple blossom. A couple of slight differences, right? So we're going to do exactly the same. So number six large, fill it up, vein the back. Now, when you put the veiner on the back, of course, the hat one, it's going to be easy to see where the hat, where it sits. When you're on the double flowering cherry, or I just forgot to mention this on that first video, the best thing to do there is to just make a little tiny, um, like a little dot in the middle of the cherry, like there. And you see then when you put your, when you put that on the top, you'll see that little dot in like the window, okay? And then that way, when you do the back of the cherry, it's gonna line it up because once you get the, the veiner on there, but you'll have then that will be right in the middle, okay? And then of course you take that out and continue as I showed you for the double flowering cherry. But, um, so, so once we got to that stage, we take it out. We don't have to go in between the petals. We don't have to cut in between this, all right? So that's a just slight difference. That's the first difference. Again, you're going to just soften around your um, edge there with your, as I said, just going to use your large balling tool, or as I said, you can use your companion tools. Remember, both of these work, uh, both of these techniques work on there just to sort of soften around your edge with your, it's going to give you this sort of softening around the edge there. And then we're going to take your going to take this, going to make a hollow in the center. All right, it's going to make a hollow in the center. And then just like we've done on the cherry and also on the apple, we're going to make a line at the base of each of the petals. And then on the plum and also on the peach, what we'll actually do there is we're going to take your companion tool and where that little line is, you're going to just sort of score a line down the middle. So you have like a lateral vein. So it's more of a scored line on there, which we haven't done on any of the other ones. So that's just the two differences. You don't have to cut in between the petals. You have this little scored line, and then we're going to cup the petal with your medium balling tool here. 
Okay, and you see how you're going to get this nice cup shape, but you'll also have this, you'll also have this sort of almost like central vein down there. And then we will take the, and remember the plum is the one with the pink center part there. It's just because they're sort of similar, but they're also a little bit different as well, you know, so if you were doing a sort of like a Asian themed wedding cake, the plum blossom is really nice. And this also looks fabulous if you do this in a long branch, like I showed you the double flowering cherry. So it's going to pull that down. So that sits into the middle here, like so. And then it's going to work your back of your little um, plum there, like so. Okay, just going to just cut off the end. You can just use your fingers there, or obviously use your scissors just to cut off the back part of the plum. So that is how we would do the plum, plum blossoms. So next I'm going to show you the uh, peach blossom. So for the peach blossom, uh, we're going to do it as the plum blossom, but we're going to use the pointed petal mold and use a number seven small. Because if you look at the size of the cherry and the pointed one, they're both a little bit bigger than the one we've just used for the apple blossom and plum blossom. So this is number seven small, just pressed into the mold, okay, just as uh, we did for the cherry and the uh, plum and the apple blossom. Now the difference in here is we don't vein the back at this stage because we're going to widen these petals. This is made that you can use this for, like as I said, citrus, like orange blossom, some lemon blossoms as well, where you would just vein the back of these. But here, I'm going to take this out of the mold, all right, and then I'm going to put this onto. If you do have any like overfill, just go in between. We don't cut on it, so the the plum and the peach you don't cut between the petals. Right now, here we're going to go onto the green side of your pad. We're going to use a little green stick or a paintbrush handle. I mean, you could use sort of something like this. All right, I'm using obviously a flower um, making stick, so this is a medium stick or a large stick. So what we're going to do here, we're just going to widen these petals slightly, and we do this before we vein them, okay? So then you're just going to widen these just a little bit, so they will become a little bit wider. Then you take the back veiner, you put the back veiner over the top, you're going to press on the top of that onto here. So this is going to now vein the back of the petals. And then we will then just continue as we did on the uh, plum. We're going to soften around your edge. So you see, because we're we're working from one family, all right, we're working from one family of flowers, there's going to, of course, be crossover and similarity. There's just slight differences with some of the veining and things like that uh, on the components. And then um, once we get to that point, we're going to take your, so we're going to cup in the, cup in the middle, we're going to just do the vein in, so just like we did on the plum. And then again, we're just going to use that vein in tool, we're going to come down the middle of the, the companion tool. Remember, do this on your um, soft, like a cosmetic sponge or a soft sponge, because if you use this on, a, on the pad, you're going to split the paste. And then we're going to use your medium ball tool, we're going to cup. there like so. Remember they're a little bit frilly, that's why you're using a smaller smaller uh, balling tool there. And then we will put this on to the, so this is going to be the peach blossom now. So this is the, this is the one with the yellow in the center, either stamen or thread. I'm showing you here actually with uh, stamen, uh, with threads. This is what I have on the finished one. And again, this is going to come through the middle here like that. And again, you're just going to work this down and trim off the back of that, okay? And that would be your uh, that would be your your uh, peach blossoms, okay? And most of the peach blossoms are um, pink, but there are some varieties of peach, you know. And of course, there are many varieties of peaches. There's white peaches and you know different um, yellow peaches and different types of ones, donut peaches. So you're just going to create that and then just hang that upside down, and so that will give you your um, your uh, flower. Uh, the flowers. Now the uh, buds are done in exactly the same way as the, uh, so the buds are done in exactly the same way as we did for the uh, making the buds for the apple blossoms, except these are done in pink, all right, so just exactly the same. And of course you're using brown floral tape rather than green floral tape. And uh, so these are your small, your medium, your large, and your extra large. And just like on the um, peach, uh, on the uh, apple blossom, I've done uh, basically two of each of the buds, 
for each of the flowers and then I've also got three flowers okay and uh, so those will be your buds so you just really follow the directions for your apple but just as I said use pink and brown wire and then um, the leaves so the leaves here now when you do the leaves um, I'm going to just show you leaves on the peach all right the plum generally when I use plum um, I use just it without leaves okay just like I showed you the pruners but here we're going to use the the two small leaves here all right this is the leaf here and the leaf here so it's the leaves inside so those are a little smaller as you can see so the large leaf is about the size of the small serrated leaf we used on the cherry and on the apple and here you're going to use a number four and a number five and you will have a little bit of extra paste so when you press this into the mold um, just almost press it in so you're going to just use almost a little tiny bit off all right so because a small four and small five was too small but it says a regular number four but when you push the paste to the edge of the mold you're going to have a little excess so on those two just trim off any excess paste and then make your ridge, put your wire in, 28 gauge white wire, so exactly the same technique, all right? And those are gonna make the, uh, the little leaves. So as you can see, it's obviously a little bit smaller. So these are the two sizes um, of the leaves. And if you compare them to the size of the cherry leaves, you can see how they're smaller. So actually the large one is about the size of the small cherry leaf and um, apple blossom leaf. And of course, this is a little bit bigger. Okay, um, but as I said, so but you again, you can mix and match your leaves as well. So when you want little tiny leaves, because remember in the um, early part of the spring, when the leaves start to come out, they're very tiny, okay? And then they obviously, um, you know, become larger as they sort of open out and things. Um, so you've got different options. So there's two different leaf styles on there. The serrated leaf I use for the cherry and for the apple blossom. And then these are the leaves I've used for the uh, peach, all right? And uh, so when we come back, I'm going to show you the coloring on these, just to show you the slight variation on coloring. So if you have some ideas for different color combinations, and then we're going to put these together. So on the plum and the peach, the calyx is exactly the same as on the apple. So using that, um, as I said, same technique. All right, so the small one doesn't have to be cut in, just the big one. And of course, your calyx need to dry. These are all dry, ready for the next step. Now, first thing we're going to do, we're going to take some aubergine color. So aubergine is like almost like a, an eggplant color, just using a small brush. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm going to brush that into the middle of the flower. So the little, almost like donut shape, it's gonna have a little bit of that uh, aubergine color onto it. Okay, and then with that small brush, I'm gonna just sort of brush like a little, um, just where you made the indentation with the companion tool, not on the cosmetic sponge. You're gonna get almost like a sort of slightly darker pink little stripe down your petal here come underneath your stamen, it's gonna get this little stripe of color uh, into there, okay? And then um, what we're gonna do is going to then take, so that's gonna be with the aubergine. We're then gonna use some fuchsia, all right? So this is really a sort of very bright pink. And um, just like I did on the apple blossom, I'm gonna go around your edge with this fuchsia color. So it's gonna go around your edge of your And you can come in just a little tiny bit with that, meaning you're not doing it right on the very edge, just come in a little tiny bit with your fuchsia color. See how you're gonna get this nice color onto there. Remember, just don't load too much color on your brush, okay? I'm gonna do the same on the you see it's gonna be a little bit more blended in. Um, so you, you know, when you're doing it on the very edge, you hold your brush just like that. When you're gonna get a little bit of color coming down, you're actually gonna use your brush just a little bit more sort of flat so that it comes, comes down. There we go, all right. And on your buds, you're gonna brush with your buds. You're gonna come down with the fuchsia, about two thirds of the way down. about two thirds of the way down with the fuchsia. Then I'm gonna come back with the aubergine. So the aubergine is gonna go on top of the buds. So you're gonna sort of bring that down just about a third of the way down. So the bud will almost have this fuchsia into like an aubergine color. So it's gonna bring that down just a little tiny bit there, like so, okay. Then we're gonna take prairie green. All right, so prairie green color used on the cherry. 
for the um, single flowering cherry. So we're going to use that on the bottom of the buds, a little bit of prairie green on there. And then you'll also use that, it's going to be done on the, um, so you're going to use that around the calyx part as well. Okay, so I'm just going to use the prairie on the calyx. So I'm just going to do in here. And a little bit on the, it's just a sort of softish green, sort of on the top part of the calyx. On the flower, you're going to do right in the middle, you're going to just go in with a little tiny touch of green right in that center part there, just almost like where the little companion tool, needle tool end went in there. A little bit of green, it's going to go around here, a little bit of green on your calyx. And then we finally finish up with a little bit of the aubergine color, just at the very, very base. So just a little bit of the aubergine at the very, very base of the blossoms, and the buds as well. So this is gonna give you this uh, nice color. Most cherry blossoms have this sort of like a, this uh, shaded uh, burgundy plum aubergine sort of color, you know, almost like a sort of chocolatey color depending on varieties, usually where they meet the stem, okay? And so those will be your, and again, um, usually it's easier just to put this together and then steam it, all right? So put it together and then steam it. Um, and uh, so that's gonna be the coloring on the uh, plum. And then the coloring on the peach, all right? So here, coloring on the peach, we're going to be using uh, on the peach here, so on the peach blossoms, we're going to be uh, dust magenta in the indentations at the base of the petals and the top two thirds of the above. Okay, that's uh, going to be for the very, very bottom part there. And you're going to use a prairie green and uh, it's a prairie green color and apple gr uh, prairie green and, and uh, light apple mix. All right, now this is called magenta color here. Okay, so, so what I'm going to do here is on the, um, on the flower here, I'm going to just sort of do the pink, magenta pink. So you can see it's just a different color. If you look at the colors, you know, these are the colors that basically we've used. You see, they're all a little bit different. This is the color I used in episode two or in video two for the cherry blossoms, double and single. This is the color I used for the apple blossom. This is fuchsia, which obviously is quite a lot stronger. But you see also within the magenta and cosmos, this is a little tiny bit more purpley color. So it's really whatever you have, you know, so don't get too stressed about the, the colors because they're better. You'll see how they're just going to be a little tiny bit different. And so again, you're just going to just brush this around. It's going to come just a little bit into the petals, so a little bit like I did on the plum. And then we're going to use the magenta on the back here as well. But these blossoms are such a lovely addition to, uh, you know, to spring arrangements, but also they look stunning on their own, like the cake uh, behind me. I started off with, with the, um, obviously the lovely uh, pink spray coming down the cake and just, I've got the double flowering cherries on there, but you could do the same type of thing with your, as their plum blossoms. And then we're gonna, it's gonna go into that indentation to make that a little bit darker. Okay, and then you would do the same on the buds. Um, the buds you would just do exactly the same as the uh, buds. So here on the buds here, which I've already done, you're just gonna bring that pink down. You're just using the one color, the magenta two thirds of the way down. Um, and then you're going to, uh, once we've done that, mix a prairie, prairie and a light apple. This is the color I used on my, um, on my uh, first cherry blossom. Oh, sorry, on the, on the uh, double flower and cherry. This is a mixture of light apple, and, uh, light apple and prairie green. So that's these two here. So I've just used equal amounts of those, which I use that quite a lot. So it's almost like a sort of an in-between color. And you're gonna brush that at the bottom one third above the calyx. You're also gonna put just a little bit of that into the here, into the middle of the stamens. So you're just going to brighten up that middle with the center part there. And then um, once we've done, and then uh, you're going to use that also in the, over on the calyx, all right? So it's going to be a little bit of that on the calyx. And then you can take, take your, and then we're going to use some of the, the, 
this is the uh, pink here so this is the magenta color I'm going to use just a little bit of that just onto your calyx here okay so just a little bit of the magenta pink onto the calyx there and that will give you your coloring on your um, as I said peach okay um, and then the peach is going to have leaves on it and those are done in the same color I used for the um, apple um, so you can use the lime green um, or you can use the apple green okay um, so these ones were done with apple but you could use apple or lime and then the obviously accent you always do that in the same color so you, when you put the little accent whereas like on for example the apple blossom I used cosmos as I did on the cherry leaves here I've used the magenta okay and uh, so those are finished so now next step is going to be arranging wiring those together so with the um, plum and the peach, we're going to uh, not wire these into florets, into groups, because like when we did the cherry and the apple, we put them into almost like little posies, like little individual groups. When you do the uh, plum and the cherry, uh, what we're going to do there is because the branches, they're not like going groups, they're almost like just integrated down, a little bit like how I showed in uh, the video two when I did the groupings of the uh, double flower and cherry, the prunus. So what I'm going to do here is I'm using a 22 gauge wire. This is a long wire and this could be full length or obviously I've just cut this down to about three quarters of the length. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to first of all take just a small bud. This is one of the small buds. I'm just going to put this on the end and then I'm going to just take my floral tape. I'm just going to start with my floral tape. I'm just going to come down just a little way. This is about five centimeters, about two inches. I'm going to come up and then I'm going to come down. Okay. So this is going to give you the sort of like the first little group and then I'm going to put in so here what you do is you're going to actually sort of just bend these so they only need to be about a centimeter long these uh, pieces or actually about a little bit less than about a quarter of an inch or about seven seven millimeters. I'm just going to put them in little groupings um, but these are going to be quite tight to the branch. Now also when you're uh, putting flowers together like this consideration is going to be how it's going to be used. If it was like for example standing up in the top of a wedding cake to give height you would almost work three-dimensionally around here so you'd almost do like a sort of a helter skelter look but I'm going to then add a small leaf here so it's going to just sort of sit to the back there but these don't have as I said you just put these in as like individual little groups all right then you're going to come down just a little ways, going to come up and come down. So we're just doing three times, but just on a single wire, okay? Just carefully bend these out as needed. All right, so that's going to give you the, the sort of the start of this. Then I'm going to put in a flower. So again, just going to take that about a quarter of an inch, about so six millimeters or so. Going to put the flower in. So the flower is going to come in quite quite tight. You see it's a little bit different than the way we did the other because some of the fruit blossoms just grow in a different sort of way because almond is like the same as this. And then I'm going to put in some buds. I'm going to have a little bud this side as well. I'm going to come in quite quite close to the to the arrangement and I'm going to put in another I'm going to put in another uh, leaf. So these are the two smaller leaves and just want to balance your leaf. So you see like this one I'm going to have coming on this side. But this is really, um, you know, this is really good. Uh, like if you want height in an arrangement to just use your flower like, you know, like this, because you could make this to give like height and then you could have like tulips or other spring flowers, but down, up and down. So each time you do three times, okay. Then I'm going to put in just a couple of buds. So I'm going to just have in just two, two buds here like this. So here we now um, going to continue down with the cherry, oh, sorry, with the uh, peach. Just a bit confusing having so many different fruit blossoms, but with the uh, peach. So you see how now I'm going to just add the, but when you see a lot of times, like if you go, if you go and you buy say silk, uh, cherry blossom or silk, you know, plum blossoms or peach blossoms. This is usually how they're sort of more put together. Um, but you see how you're just going to have this little group in, so it's really pretty. And then again, I'm going to then just going to add my blossoms here. And then I'm going to put in my last bud. So I'll have the bud just coming from slightly from behind here. So 
we can have that. And then I'm going to put the, the leaves there. So I've got the three, three leaves. So this one I'm using leaves on it, uh, just to sort of show you how you can put leaves on. But remember, that is optional, because it really depends on what time of spring you're depicting as well. And then I'm going to have a, a leaf here and a leaf here, just to, so that's going really more like in towards a group. Now, once you get to this point, when you finish putting in all of your flowers, all right, so once you finish putting in your flowers, but just be careful bending these. You know, you have to sort of trust yourself, but also your pace, so you know how strong it is, all right? But then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take two extra 22 gauge wires. These are just like actually a little bit shorter. And so then the main part of the stem here is gonna be three wires. And again, just like um, on the apple, you just decide on how, how long you want this to be visible. So I'm gonna go down to about here, because if you wanted this to be sort of tall in an arrangement, and you're gonna go up to the top, and then down to the bottom. Choose your pieces of tape. And remember, this I'm using the brown floral tape. On the cherry, I use the, you can use the twig or the brown. It's what you have available. And, but brown is much easier to find than like a twig, twig color. But it's just, a, the twig is like almost a brown green. And then I'm just finishing off the bottom, just sort of in a single row here. And then I will then just cut, cut that. Okay, and again, I'm just going to, just gonna texture. Remember, you only need to do the texturing and thicken this up on the part of this that's going to be seen, okay? And you can do that as you go. All right, I'm just gonna just open these out just a little bit. And then once you get to this point there, and again, you're just gonna just sort of texture that, just sort of, uh, just here and there, just to give you that sort of bark texture. And of course you could, you could um, dust a little bit of brown on there if you wanted to, but you see how it's gonna give you your sort of, uh, this will give you your, um, as I said, the peach blossom. And then here, this is the plum. So the plum is done in exactly the same way. All right, and you can see the plum I've done without leaves because this is like more of a winter one. So the leaves don't come usually till all the flowers have died on that. So as I said, I like when I'm using plum for that more oriental look. This looks better actually without leaves. And of course the peach you could do in the same way as well. But both really beautiful flowers, all right, stems. And then of course you would just, um, it's much easier now to just steam these uh, once you get them completed. Because as I explained, if you have to pick up each individual bud, and leaf and things like that, or uh, buds and flowers and uh, the, to steam them all, it's much easier just to put it together. And the steam doesn't affect this in any way, but of course you have to make sure your leaves are glazed or spray lacquer or leaf glaze on those before you put them together. Um, but you see how you've got the two, uh, two lovely, um, as I said, blossom sprays. Um, so these would be really good when you want height in an arrangement, like when you want it taller on a cake, you know, you can use these. And of course this wire could be longer and you could have more flowers on there as well. Both of these were done with the same number of components, three flowers and two of each size buds. Okay, you can see they're comparable uh, in size. So here we're going to now take the steamer and then with my steamer, this is gonna really, really sort of bring the flower to life and it's gonna intensify the color as well. All right, so on the, for example, this color here, you're gonna get that really nice color. And then here we have the, this is the magenta color I've used on the the peach, because when you steam, it really brings out the sort of the contrast color on the edge of the petals, all right? So here you have your uh, plum blossoms, we have our peach blossoms, and of course we also have covered the apple blossom as well. So I hope you've enjoyed this third part, third video of my using my Flower Pro Blossoms mold to make apple blossoms, peach and plum blossoms. And in addition to that, in video one and two, making the single cherry and the double flowering cherry. So I hope you will have a lot of fun using this new Flower Pro Blossom mold. I can't wait to see all your creations. Until next time, this has been Chef Nicholas Lodge. Sweet wishes, bye.